Hello and welcome back to the channel. In today's episode, we're going to be taking a look at uh, 12 days of DT still. We're on our 10th day. Let's get started. Okay, so on our 10th day of DT, our DT teacher sent to me 10 metals and alloys. All right, so to get started here then, we're going to use my little point here to cover a few things. So we've got different camps to start off with. So the camp one, which is our ferris, and then camp two, which are non-ferris, and then camp three will be our alloys, which I'll talk about later on. So I've got a few from each camp. So it, you could either split this into different revision cards. So you might have blue cards are all ferris, and green cards are non-ferris, and then alloys are yellow or something like that. So you might want to do it that way, or you might want to just write everything on the same colored card and then maybe highlight that blue, that green, Little and yellow, just to help you remember the different types of, of metals. Now, very quickly, ferrous metals, of course, are often corrode and rust out in the weather. They contain iron and uh, most often have magnetic properties. Whereas non ferrous metals, they tend not to rust and they tend not to have any iron in them. There's a few exceptions which I'll touch on when we get to them, but essentially, that's the difference between these two here. Uh, one is magnetic and rusts, the other one is not magnetic and does not rust. Okay, so what have we got then? We've got high carbon steel. From a revision point of view, with your revision cards, I would be putting this bold area on one side of the card, and on the opposite side of the card, I'd have the bullet points of what's good about it, what's bad about it, uh, or a description, if that's what we're looking at. So, high carbon steel then, very hard, can be hardened and tempered, rusts easily. So... When we've got high carbon steel, we're talking about things like tools, like chisels, like we've got here. So, because it's got a high carbon content, it makes it very, very hard. This has got to be hard because if I'm chiseling something, if I'm going to go through something, this metal needs to be harder than the material that I'm going to go through. So, uh, like an oak, for example, which again is a hard wood or hard timber, this chisel needs to be harder than that so that it can go through it. Otherwise, I'll mallet the chisel into the wood and the the chisel will just disappear, it'll just splinter off. So that's why it needs a high carbon content. The more carbon it's got in it, the harder it's going to get. Uh, and that's why it can be tempered as well, so that it can it can resist things like those indentations. And if we talk, remember talking about properties of hard, that it can resist indentation. Uh, downside is, of course, they rust easily. And that's probably one of the main properties of, of ferrous. We also have something called low carbon steel. Now, what's low carbon steel? Well, they're, they're things like bolts, screws, that are malleable, we can shape them quite easily. As you can see, we've put some threads on here and we've, we've marked them so that they, the screwdrivers can go through as well. They are tough, they have to be tough because they need to hold things in place more often than not. Uh, they can't be hardened, so they can't be made to be uh, any more hard because that would be the last thing you want. If you put a hard screw, uh, a high carbon steel screwdriver into there and you turn the screwdriver and all that happens is you, you just waste away the end of the screwdriver because this is harder than the, the screwdriver. It's not gonna work. So, can't be hardened. Cheap. So, obviously, they're, they're, they're cheap parts. I say, say obviously, because nuts and bolts come dime a dozen, don't they? So, you get loads and loads of these, comparatively. Uh, but they corrode too easily. So, that they again, they rust too easily. So, uh, that is a negative side to low carbon steel. Right, next on the list is cast iron. Now, very hard, again, but brittle. So, it, it, uh, there's a chance that this can shatter. Resists wear and tear, uh, and it does resist rust. However, there's a there's a downside to that, and that it's very heavy. So, if you imagine picking up a, a cast iron frying pan compared to a, a non-stick iron pan that you've you've probably got in your homes, there's a big weight difference there. Um, and of course, you know things like handles. You can't have plastic handles on them and things like that. So, they're not as as useful anymore. Things like gates, uh, manhole covers, things that have to go under uh, stress and, and compression made out of cast iron because they need to withstand that kind of force tend not to be used in things like this anymore because there are, are all better alternatives which we'll, we'll look at later so there are ferrous metals there so looking at the clock uh, four minutes hopefully we can get through this before 10 i don't want this to be any longer than 10 minutes so here we go zinc on is our first non-ferrous metal it's a weak metal but malleable so we can shape it really easily high resistance to corrosion and low melting point so uh, compared to something like high carbon steel, which heats up and melts at about over a thousand degrees, zinc comparatively 
does not. Aluminium is next on our list. A, a durable, lightweight. These two properties here are the, the main ones really to talk about when we're talking about aluminium. Uh, however, it is also a good conductor of electricity. So we've all seen the aluminium cans we get. Uh, great conductor of electricity. Durable. When I, I drop it, they, they don't shatter. They may dint. But uh, also the positive there is, of course, it's lightweight. So that's, that's why you'd offset things like... Uh, aluminium against iron because of its, its lightweight properties and the fact that it's durable okay next on our list is copper uh, a reddish color or, or like a, 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 well copper color i suppose you could say a bit more reddish metal than, than the others relatively soft we can bend it as you can see in my image here we can bend this into different shapes uh excellent and i, I stress this on your revision cards and I, like i stressed it in italics here highlight it or underline it or give it a different color excellent conductor of electricity and these are often used for plumbing as well so plumbing would involve thermal conductivity so it, i haven't put it here but it is also a good thermal conductor and so there we go lastly on our list we have tin which i put here stereotypically here a tin can so i hope you can remember that this uh what, what tin looks like soft ductile with a high resistance to corrosion so these things are going to be uh, good in all weathers so you could you could chuck this outside and keep this outside for a long time and it won't rust which is a, a good benefit to having things like tin again quite soft so you can see here that relatively we have hard metals a ferrous ish and then the non-ferrous metals tend to be a little bit softer right let's get over into the alloy section of things right alloys then combination of different metals uh, to increase their properties so Brass combined to increase hardness and resist corrosion. So when we think about brass, I tend to think straight away of a brass instrument um, like we've got here. And it, these are the two things that we're, we're trying to create with this with this uh, hybrid, I suppose, this alloy. We want it to be harder and we want it to resist corrosion. Stainless steel. Again, it comes from the ferrous metals here because it could rust. However, they've combined it to make it tough uh, hard and resist corrosion so although it's got steel in it it won't rust uh, it resists that corrosion because it's been coated now again it's combined to get the toughness in there and the hardness in there because I need to be able to use it for, for eating really more than anything else but uh, these are the things we're going to do so you can see clearly I think here that alloys combine things and I think that's that's the, the takeaway from this section alloys need to be able to combine the best bits of other metals and other materials to make them better and then lastly on our list we have high speed steel not to be confused with low carbon and high carbon steel but high speed think i always say think of drill bits because they spin at high speeds uh, and they've been combined to make them strong and remain hard when heated now some students could struggle with this and go well what does that mean well if you think about a drill bit we can drill into metals like I talked about with the high carbon steel, high speed steel. If I'm drilling a metal or I'm, I'm, I'm milling a metal, if I'm, I'm, I'm turning a metal, if I'm using metal to metal, I need this tool to be harder than the metal I'm cutting or, or shaping. Otherwise it won't. It'll just waste the edge off that and it'll just bore the edge away. So high speed steel needs to be good at that. Also friction. If it's spinning quickly onto something that's already hard, it's going to generate heat. So because of that, I mean, the simplest way of doing that is just rub your hands together. You're going to generate heat through your hands. Same thing with steel, but it just does it a lot, hot, a lot hotter uh, and then it can warp and, 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 and melt. So high speed steel has to be strong. It has to remain hard when heated. Otherwise, it's not going to do its job. Whew, right, I've rattled through that. Uh, 10 things done. I've got 30 seconds to finish the video. Let's go back to home base, finish off. Right, ladies and gents, what have we learned in today's session? So in today, uh, on our 10th day of DT, my teacher sent to me 10 metals and alloys. So lots to revise from there. As always, you can stop me, pause me, rewind me if you need to have a little bit more time to revise. Now until next time, stay safe. And like it said, don't forget to subscribe. Bye now.